everybody, welcome to Brickfall. My name is Jack, today I'm really happy because I finally, finally finished this little build. I've been working on it for an extremely long time, but just sort of casually and getting parts uh, every now and then to kind of work on it. So I don't have a time-lapse build for you, but this is the Swordfish 2. Okay, and before I get into the details of this ship, for those that don't know what the Swordfish 2 is, it's a spaceship flown by the main character Spike in the show Cowboy Bebop. It's a Japanese animation, sci-fi, noir, western that focuses on a ragtag group of bounty hunters. Suffice to say, I'm not a huge fan of animation, but I am a really big fan of this show. It's both well-written and highly stylized, note the jazz music playing in the background. And if you're a fan of Firefly, usually you like the show Cowboy Bebop, I know some people still argue about whether or not Firefly was influenced by this show, but I'm not opening up that can of worms on this episode. Let's get back to the ship. And this is no joke, but about a year ago, I started looking at different Lego builds for this ship. And you can imagine with this being a cult classic sci-fi TV show that a lot of Lego builders have attempted this in the past. And I mean a lot of Lego builders have tried to build this ship. Some of them are really, really excellent. But I gotta say, when I stumbled across Christopher Hoffman's builds that came out about a year ago, came out just about when I was looking around at these different builds, there wasn't any other version that I wanted to make. Fortunately, Christopher did have a couple of extra pictures on his Flickr that show the internals, and these were immensely helpful, especially considering you cannot make a LEGO digital designer file that would completely make this ship. There's too many weird little connections that I don't think the program would support, and I'm especially fortunate that the builder decided to tag a lot of the sections in his Flickr pictures to either explain where certain parts would attach on, or in some cases he directly linked brick link pieces to certain spots on the internal structure is really, really, really helpful, and it made the building process run a lot smoother, but that being said, this was not an easy thing to put together. Aside from there being relatively complex built structures on the inside, and a very high level of dexterity and sort of nice little balancing techniques as you mishmashed pieces together, it really felt like this build had a very specific order of operations in which you put the parts together in certain sections. What I mean is there is a lot of clever balancing and weight distribution distribution going on here. And for example, you could never put the wings on before the bottom gun assembly because the sheer weight of the wings would rip the ship in half if the guns weren't attached at the bottom. All right, so now I think I'm just gonna pick up the swordfish and show it off just sort of part by part. And first taking a look at the back end, we have this two by three modified wing end black silver speckle design. I think it looks great there. And as we make our way forward towards the cockpit, this is probably the least accurate to scale in the ship. I think the cockpit build is a little bit bigger in real life, but in order to keep that nice sleek design, uh, I think it works really well. And as we make our way past the nose, there's always going to be just a little bit of space on the top there. We have the bottom build for the weapons assembly. Now the red pod build isn't too difficult to put together, and the gun itself is attached actually by a little lipstick piece in between them, but the whole thing is put together with those black pistol pieces on the sides, and that's what keeps the wings from shearing the body in two pieces like I mentioned before. Now the build for the weapon weapon is relatively simple. I do have a little flexi tube on the inside there, keeps it nice and solid. And ultimately, I'm pretty happy with the way the weapon looks. But now when we move on over to the wings, you can see that the studs are actually not completely attached right in the back, and that was intentional. It just allows for those side fins to be edged in a little bit, which is more accurate. Now the build for the back is great, and I was really confused at first. I wasn't able to get those visor pieces to fit in until I realized, or I read in the Flickr description, that those those are Technic figure visors. Yeah, so those helmet pieces right on the sides that are held in just with a little bit of friction, and it really, really brings that back thruster alive. Now, while I said the rest of the body was pretty difficult to put together, it feels really solid once it is together. This back part, though, is kind of the no-touchy zone. It's a bit delicate, and just about every piece you see here is held on by one stud each. So you definitely couldn't support the weight of the build if you wanted to pick it up from there. But yeah, here's the build one more time, and this is how you would handle it if you ever wanted to pick it up, though I would doubt I would let a lot of people pick it up, though. This thing comes apart. It's going to be at least 20 minutes, but sometimes a half-hour rebuild. Now, if there's any single detail more that I'd like to point out about this ship is the angle of those wings in the front here. When it's freeze-framed, and I can show a picture of uh, how the ship looks, well, this is from the intro sequence from the show, the wings are ever so slightly tilted 
forward, and out of all the other LEGO builds, depending on how accurate or inaccurate this one is, this is the only build that managed to pull off that uh, pretty essential piece of accuracy. And so yeah, it just makes a really awesome profile, and as the ship is spinning around, I would just like to say thank you to Christopher Hoffman for designing such an excellent build. I have left links in the video description below to the Flickr account for anybody that wants to see a little bit in closer detail, especially the internal parts. I didn't really go over that as much. That's because I pretty much kept them exactly how the pictures look in the Flickr account. And if I have one more thing to say about the swordfish is that I think it is a truly efficient design. And what I mean by that is that every piece used here is pretty much the exact piece that you need in order to create this mock at this scale and with this particular type of style. That is not to say I don't think improvements could be made upon this mock, but because this style of building is just so advanced, I feel like any changes could only really be minor ones and they'd be based on your own personal aesthetic as opposed to major fundamental design changes that many mocks often allow room for. Now in true Bebop fashion, why don't we just end this episode with uh, Swordfish flying around the studio while some nice slow jazz plays. Butter. Oh my god. Hey, I make Lego YouTube videos, so uh, welcome to the club. Onto the third floor now, there's a lot of great details up here. Now, if you were a minifigure and walked straight up the stairs, the first thing you would see in this room is the grand piano slash dining room. Okay, these legs are crazy weak, and it's really hard to hold up the weight of this with one hand, so I think I'm going to try attaching the side panels after I put it on the legs. Mm -hmm. 